organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Tonight on Daily Iowan TV, find out why you might not have to take that trip to Starbucks to get your favorite warm winter drink. And in Spotlight Wednesday, see how one student is staying on the stage and not taking a back seat to his health. And in sports, a preview of the upcoming Hawkeye wrestling season. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Hannah Thompson. And I'm Michelle Nago. Counselor Kingsley Botchway will be the Iowa City School District's new Equity and Staffing Director. The new appointment comes after a 5-2 vote from the school board. Botchway's new role as director will include more involvement with staffing and hiring than it did in the past. Botchway says he's excited about working with community groups and partnering with the Creative Corridor Center for Equity and Staffing. Gov governor Terry Branstad's spokesman, Jimmy Centers, said today that the governor will defend the state's policy of taking voting rights away from convicted felons. On Friday, the American Civil Liberties Union filed a lawsuit to restore voting rights to thousands of former offenders. That would be done by restricting the disenfranchisement disenfranchising policy to only serious crimes. Senators said Branstad does restore rights to felons who apply and complete their sentences and pay restitution. History was made today as the European Space Agency's fillet probe became the first to land on a comet, but not everything went as planned. Scientists are confused on whether or not the probe landed properly when they found the anchoring harpoons did not fire. Scientists remain upbeat as they are still receiving data from the spacecraft and hope to learn more in the near future. As the cold weather hits Iowa, students are looking for ways to get their caffeine fixes without leaving the house. Daily Iowa TV's Katie Sextro went to a local Starbucks to find out what would happen if students could have their favorite drinks delivered. Starbucks is one of the most popular coffee shops for residents of Iowa City and UI students. In 2015, select Starbucks will be starting a delivery service. Iowa City's local Starbucks, located on Clinton Street, says they have not heard anything about that opportunity yet. Store manager Dave Armstrong says the delivery service would be more beneficial to businessmen and women rather than college students who walk by the shop frequently. Especially when the winter months roll around, Starbucks gets less service from college students. Dave Armstrong explains what Starbucks uses to get more business during this time. Starbucks is really big on social media, so they'll release specials as they see fit. and. All the kids are paying with their phones now, and, and they see the deals, so I mean, they just, they just come out over this course of time, and we're given little notice about them. Starbucks also uses the special red holiday cups and seasonal drinks to bring in more customers. So how would students feel about a delivery service when they're on campus during the winter months? I live in a resident hall, like, far away from Starbucks, so I'm, me and my roommate are always like, if Starbucks delivered, like, we would get it, like, ten times more. I would love a delivery service. That would be awesome. Yeah, especially when that it's getting colder. It's definitely, that'd be awesome if they could do something to deliver to the dorms or something like that, kind of within the area. While Starbucks remains to be very popular among college students, for good reason, a delivery service is not in the plans yet, but could be in the near future. This is Katie Sextro reporting from Starbucks, Daily Iowan TV. While Starbucks is considering delivery for their customers in business, a business in Sioux City, Iowa is grabbing customers' attention another way. Daily Iowa TV's Blake Jorgensen finds out why Sneaky's Chicken is keeping customers coming back for more. Disappointed with the lack of chatter and atmosphere in their restaurant, those in charge at Sneaky's Chicken in Sioux City, Iowa decided to experiment on Wednesday nights. Instead of watching everybody sit silently on their phones, they offered a 10% discount for anybody who would place their phone in a box during their meal. To no surprise, it's worked. It's fun. It's just a lot of fun. You see the phones and the boxes will jump across the table and they'll be ringing and people will look at them like, oh, I can't answer it. I don't give a discount. And so you make a joke out of it. And the deal has received attention across the state and even the nation from news sources like the Washington Times. The free publicity has paid off for Sneakies. I mean, we have the same people coming in every Wednesday now and the place fills up and it's, you know, last night was even busy even without, you know, a discount. So that's, that's a plus on our end. And while the extra business is an added bonus, at its core, 
the deal is meant to bring people together in conversation. More jokes. More jokes for sure. We like to kid around a lot. And sadly, I wasn't able to make it on Wednesday, but I'm not one to pass up fried chicken. And on principle, I'll throw my phone in the box. In Sioux City, Iowa, I'm Blake Jorgensen, Daily Iowan TV. Still to come on Daily Iowan TV, we go behind the stage in this week's spotlight to see how one student isn't letting his health affect his acting. And in sports for you Iowa wrestling fans, find out what to expect from your favorite Hawkeye wrestlers this season. Well, Michelle, I won't lie to you today. I was a little bit excited about the snow. I love winter. It was perfect out. Okay, well, exciting is not the word I think about when I think about <laughs> this cold weather. So let's check in with Abby Meyer, who's standing in the weather studio to give us a preview of this week's weather. And hopefully she gives us normal people that don't like the cold some good news. Abby. Well, Michelle, sorry, but it looks like we have snow ahead. Uh, as we saw before, we aren't the only parts of Iowa struggling to adjust to the weather, and the winter temperatures aren't going away. Tomorrow morning, we'll start off in the freezing temperatures at about 20 degrees. If, you, if you'll be out most of the day, be sure to bundle up because it will only climb to 30 degrees in the afternoon. The sun may not make an appearance until the evening, but temperatures will stay below freezing and reach 26 degrees. Looking into the rest of the week, the chilly weather seems pretty consistent. Snow continues to look possible on Saturday and could stick around due to the frozen ground. The beginning of next week will have an even colder push of weather. Sunday through Tuesday, lows will be in the mid-teens and highs won't pass 30 degrees. If you aren't a huge winter weather fan, I suggest you make yourself comfortable with your winter coat because the temperatures are here to stay. Thanks guys, back to you at the desk. Thanks for the bad news, Abby. But November is National Diabetes Month, which helps bring awareness to the disease that affects about 8% of the population here in Iowa. In today's spotlight, I talked to one UI senior who is part, who is part of that 8%. Handle this on my own. 24 Thank hours. You. That's the amount of time senior Matt Smith has spent rehearsing lines each week for an upcoming theater production. It's normally like 9 to 11 on Monday, 7 to 11 the other weekdays, and then we have a nice six hour chunk on Saturday. So we stay pretty busy. Even with such a packed schedule, there's something Matt can't forget to do in between his classes and rehearsals. And it involves pricking his finger with this four to five times a day. This is my glucometer. This is how I check my blood sugar. At just 13, Matt became one of 29.1 million Americans living with diabetes, which affects about one out of every 11 people. I lost like probably 50 pounds. Like I was always tired, like always thirsty. Type Maybe two diabetes is preventable, wiring, but Matt's uh, type one is this. not. Type one diabetes is due to the uh, complete destruction of the cells that make insulin in the pancreas. Type two diabetes, it's due to insulin resistance. So the most common cause of resistance to insulin is uh, obesity. Besides and having to wear his insulin pump, Matt says stuff. you wouldn't even know he well, had the disease. Most of the time, unless I tell people or they see like my supplies and stuff, they don't really know, which I like. <laughs> Something Matt hopes doesn't change once he graduates and pursues his dream of becoming an actor. <laughs> if gone untreated, untreated, diabetes can lead to heart disease, kidney failure, or even blindness. Catch Matt take the stage this weekend at the theater building in a student-produced play called Role Models. With all of this cold weather rolling in, winter sports teams are gearing up as their seasons are getting underway. Yeah, let's toss it over to Taylor Mathis and Austin Luce in the sports studio. Guys? Thanks, ladies. The weather may be getting colder, but for the Iowa wrestling team, things are starting to heat up. As Coach Brand said, it's fall and it's time. With the Hawkeye wrestling schedule starting action this weekend, Daily Iowa TV's Chelsea Brown took a look at what this squad brings to the mat. The Iowa wrestling team had some noticeable competitors and title holders recently dating back to the trio, including Matt McDonough, Tony Ramos, and Derek St. John but this 2014 squad could be the whole factor to contribute to a team title. When you look at the makeup of this team, you look at you know the difference between a guy like Corey Clark, who's a lightweight, and then you look at a guy like Bobby Telford. I think there's a lot of personality difference there where one guy's laid back and the other guy's go, go, go all the time, but they still have the same common themes in their head, and that is to produce results on the mat and, and um, in the classroom. 
and uh, we, we want to, you know, have that prevail throughout our lineup. The Hawkeyes enter the season ranked first in the USA Today coaches poll with nine ranked wrestlers in the top ten and four All-Americans. Heavyweight Bobby Telford with some added pressure on his back is the only Hawkeye ranked third or better. There's no other time like March. It's my favorite month of the year. It's my favorite tournament of the year. Um, if I'm not looking at that right now, I'm looking at a whole season. Some weight changes and newcomer contributions could be the things that solidify the Hawkeye lineup. After the battle at the 125 spot between Thomas Gilman and Corey Clark, Clark will move up to 133. The alteration could be a kind of domination McDonough and Ramos contribute to the Hawkeye team in back-to-back -back weight classes. It's good, and I think it's a natural more than anything because Clark came to us about moving up a weight. And I think that if, if Clark had wanted to stay down, I don't think Gilman was moving up. So I think we would have had an issue there where you probably would have had an early season controversy and then one guy would have had to move up and this works better. The individual talent exists within their squad and hopefully the consistency as a whole will keep this team at the top. This is Chelsea Brown for Daily Island TV Sports. The Hawkeyes compete in the Luther Open this Saturday, but you can catch your first glimpse of the squad in Iowa City on November 21st when they host the Iowa City Duels. The Iowa field hockey team recently wrapped up their 2014 season with a loss in the opening round of the Big Ten Tournament against Northwestern. Iowa field hockey's Natalie Capone ranks sixth nationally in points per game her sophomore year. Now as a junior, she has accomplished even more. Our very own Taylor Bartz caught up with the standout athlete for this week's What It Takes segment. Thanks for that, guys. Iowa field hockey season may be over, but the work is never done for junior forward Natalie Caffone. This season, Caffone has had some major accomplishments as a Hawkeye, including earning herself a spot on the program's top 10 scoring list. I caught up with the forward to find out just what it takes to be Iowa field hockey's leading scorer. Well, my sister played, so when we moved to our hometown, it was big, um, like in our area. So when she started playing, I kind of just followed in her footsteps and decided to start playing. I wouldn't say it was like a family thing, but my, most of my family does play. Our high school coach held camps over the summer, so me and my friends would do them growing up, but you can't really start playing competitively until 7th and 8th grade, so that's when uh, like I started. My high school coach played here, and she loved it and had nothing but good things to say about it, and I just liked the coaching, the school, the team. I, I thought that everything was things that I would like, and I could see myself playing here. Just being able to play here and like play under Lisa and Tracy, just think playing here is a huge accomplishment. A bunch of us, most of the team, usually not all together, but in different times of the day, we would practice on our own just to get an extra work. I would say that every day working hard at practice, like with my teammates and everyone that is so good, it just makes everyone else better. So I just think working hard is what leads to success. Being competitive, I like to, um, I hate losing, so, and then just practicing every day with like my best friends. For a little bit after school, I want to continue to play, but not that long. I don't, I don't really know what I want to do like for a job or anything yet, but hopefully something in sports. Time flies, first of all, like I can't believe that I'll be a senior, but um, like going to practice every day, it's an honor just to be able to play with the greatest players, like greatest coaches. Um, so just going to practice every day, forgetting about everything that's going on and just being focused on practice is a good feeling. My goal would be to win a Big Ten championship, like with the team. Unfortunately, it didn't happen this year, which is what we wanted. Um, so just seeing what we can do and win the Big Ten. Only a junior, it will be interesting to see what Cafone can do on the field her senior year. Austin and Taylor, back to you in the sports studio. Thanks for that, Taylor, but that will do it all for us here in the sports studio. Be sure to tune in tomorrow night where we have our Thursday night pregame edition of the show. That's right, Taylor. The 6-3 Hawkeye football team will head to Champaign this Saturday to take on the Fighting Illini of Illinois for the first time in six years. And we catch up with the lone senior linebacker for the Hawks, Quinton Alston. Hannah and Michelle, back to you at the desk. Make sure to pick up your copy of the Daily Iowan and read tomorrow's headlines. Read about what's sparking an increase in students at the UI College of Engineering. And read about how the UI Center for Human Rights is celebrating their anniversary later this week. That's all we have on tonight's edition of Daily Iowan TV. Make sure to tune in tomorrow night at 9 for your latest news. And always stay updated online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for joining us. And have a great night.